live. Amen. We welcome you to our Bible study tonight. Are yes. you ready for the word? Glory to God. That's the question. Are you ready for the word? We're still in our series, Your Destiny in, in Christ. Christ. Do you know you have a destiny in Christ? Yes. Some people thought <laughs> some people thought that their destiny is pre predicated on what they do, what they say. It is. But your destiny has been predestined. It has been predestined yes. in the word of Christ. And we're going to dub into that tonight. We pray that all of you have had a blessed day. We pray that the tolls of the day have been lifted off of you and that you are clarity of mind and ready to receive the word on tonight. We want to thank all of our partners and all of our volunteers that came out and helped us today with our Amen. monthly food distribution. Yes. It was an awesome success as usual. So we want to yes. thank all of you. We thank God for you, for your prayers, your support, all of you that have been coming out and helping us with that. We did over 200 and some families today, 225 families today. So we know that there's still a need in our community and yes. we want to be a part of the solution. Glory thank to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So we thank God for all of you. We thank God for the food and for the support that we had today. It was awesome, y'all. It was awesome. So if you would just look in your Bible today, we're going to jump right into this word because we don't want to relabel the time. We know that all of you have had a blessed week, a, a, a blessed start of the week, glory to yes. God. So we want to jump right into the word tonight. we got a lot of scriptures. We're going to let Lady Whitney read those scriptures, <laughs> praise God, and have to see after she reads those scriptures, I'll, uh, I'll go into prayer. Glory to God. And those of you that's in the house, if you need a Bible, just raise your hand. We got plenty of Bibles. We want everybody to have a Bible. Y'all get a Bible you want. You're talking about what pastor reading from. You know, I misquote sometimes. I might say I might say it's in John and it's in Luke. So glory to God. We want to make sure that you have your word. Amen. This is a word, church. Glory to God. When we get ready to jump into the scriptures tonight. We're going to 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter verses 24 through 27, and we're talking tonight still on our series, Your Destiny in Christ. Your Destiny. You have a destiny in Christ. We're going to 1 Corinthians 9, chapter 24 through 27, and then we're going to go to Jeremiah, very familiar verse of scripture, 29, verses 4 through 7, and then 11 through 14. Amen. Glory to God. And we're going to go to those verses of scripture in that order. Amen. Glory to God. And then we want you to share this live stream on tonight, praise God, so that others can get this word that you are about to receive. Amen. 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 Please hit that share hit button. Share I told them on Sunday, when you hit that share button, you know what that is, right? You just witness. Amen. You hit that share button, you just witnessed to somebody else that, hey, I'm receiving the word of God. See, you didn't even have to open your mouth. All you did was hit that share, and guess what? You shared the word with somebody else. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. If you've got your Bibles, praise God. Let's turn our attention first to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. And then we will go to Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 4 through 7, and then 11 through 14. So 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. And this is what the Holy Word of God reads. I'm reading a, a different version, so if, if those of you that have King James Version, this may sound a little different, but I promise you it's the same word from the same God. Amen? Amen. 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 And the Word of God reads, it says, Do you not know? That in a race, all the runners run. Yes. But only one gets the prize. Glory to God. Run in such a way as to get the prize. I want the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. Yes. But we, somebody say, but we. But, but we. we. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that every so that after I have preached to others, mm -hmm. I myself 
might not be disqualified Glory. for Glory. the prize. Amen. Then we're turning our attention, praise God, going to Jeremiah chapter 29. Yeah. And we're starting at the 4th verse through the 7th, and then we'll go to 11 through 14. And this is the, the King James Version that I am reading, and you're hearing. The Bible reads, this is the said the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captive, yeah. whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Mm -hmm. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons. Yeah. And give your daughters to husbands, mm -hmm. that they may hear sons and excuse me, that they may bear sons and daughters, yes. that ye may be increased. Be increased there. My letters are so small tonight. Be increased there and not diminished. Verse seven. And seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you. To be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Let's drop down to verse 11 through 14. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me. And ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Yes. And ye shall seek me and find me. Ye shall, excuse me, and ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. And the word of God is blessed. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we come into your holy word on tonight, Father yes, God, God, I would ask, Father, that you would lift the burdens of the day, Father God. Give us clarity of mind, Father God, that we may be able to receive your holy word tonight, Father. I pray now, Father God, that your spirit, which is the teacher of the church, Father God, yes. would lead, guide, and direct us even now, Father God, as we speak the word, your destiny in Christ. Yes. Bless us now even the more in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. We thank God for all of you tonight. Amen. We thank God for those of you that are in the house with us tonight. Guess yes. what? We're back in the house, y'all. Yes. Yes. We're back in the house. Glory to God. And we're talking tonight about your destiny in Christ. Yes. This is a continuation from last week's message. So as you might understand, we're getting a series now. Your destiny in Christ. Don't you know your destiny in Christ is better than your own destiny that you have planned for yourself. That's it. Mm. See, because God made us free will agents, guess what? I can choose my own destiny. Y'all know That's that? Not. I can choose which way I want to go. God said, I'm not going to force you. That's it. God's hope and, and, and plan was to make us free will. But he was hoping in his plan that at some point in our lives, even though we're free will agents, we're able to go the way we want to go. He was in hopes that one day we would realize that even though we can make our own decisions, make our own choices, that we would one day say, I need to choose him. Yes. He was hoping that we would one day turn around, go back and say, I need to choose him. Yes. If you remember the story about Jesus healing these ten men that had leprosy, they had a future. Mm -hmm. They had a hope. They had a destiny. Yes, they did. But they had leprosy. Yes, they did. So if you think about it, they were sick. And when you had leprosy in those times, wow. it was a, such a disease that they ostracized you. You could not be in the city. You could not be in the camp. So you would think their destiny, their future, their hope was glim. Mm -hmm. What kind of hope did they have? 
But guess what? They ran into Jesus. <laughs> they ran into Jesus, y'all. And when they ran into Jesus, all ten of them, they knew that they was diseased. They knew they couldn't come in the camp. But when they ran into Jesus, he healed them. He healed all of them. Now, look, their destiny, their future changed, right? Because they said, my God, we're Thank clean you. now. We can go in the city. We can, we can do like everybody else now. And all ten of them, they took off, y'all, yes. toward the city. Yes, they did. But one of them, y'all, yes. glory yes, to one. God. But one of them, y'all, he turned back around. And he went back to Christ. And thank he you. fell on his face. And he said, thank you, Father. Yes. Yes. Why? He thanked God because his future, his destiny had just been changed. Thank glory you. to thank God. You. Glory to God. And Jesus says to him, were there not ten of y'all? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory to God. Some of us take our blessings for granted. Yes. Mm. Now, he just healed ten of them, but only one turned around and said, my God, I got to thank you. He realized he had what we call an attitude of gratitude. Uh, gratitude. He realized, my God, yes. I got to go back and thank you. God ever done something in your life that you knew it was just God, and you said, God, I thank you. Yes. God, I thank you. This is what this man with leprosy did because Jesus had just changed his future. And the scriptures that Lady Willie just read, we know they were lengthy, and there was a lot of them. But if you would just key in with me on, for a moment, uh, uh, Jeremiah. We read this all the time. Mm -hmm. If you would just go to Jeremiah, those 11 through 14. Mm -hmm. This is where Jesus says, for I know the Jeremiah. thoughts. Jeremiah says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Said the Lord. Do you see it? Am I in your Bible? Mm -hmm. Am I reading the same Bible? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Saith the Lord. Thoughts of what? Peace. Hello, somebody. Not evil. My God, so now if it's evil in your life, you know it didn't come from him. He yeah. said, I got thoughts of peace. He's mm -hmm. telling us, y'all. He said, to give you what? An expected end. Look at what he's saying. He said, I know the beginning and the end. Good yeah. God Almighty. Hey, it's good to be with somebody that knows the start and the finish. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I'm the author and finisher of your faith. Thank My you. God, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. And here he tells us what our destiny is in him. Mm -hmm. He said, I have an expected end for you. And he said, you should call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken, in other words, and I will hear you and answer you. Mm -hmm. You still seek me, and guess what? You're going to be able to find me. You're going to be able to find me. And he says, the way you, are you going to be knowing that you're going to find me? Because you're going to search me with your heart. With your heart. Too many people yes. are trying to search him with their hand. My God. And with, with their hand out. With God, what can you do? Yeah, and with their head. But he said, when you search for me with your heart, you shall find me. And I will be found of you. Saith the Lord. Jeremiah is telling us who's saying this. And I will turn away your captivity. The things that you've gone through in life, like these ten leopards, thinking that you didn't have a future, thinking that you didn't have a destiny. He said, I'm going to turn away your captivity. I'm going to turn away your sicknesses. I'm going to turn away your disease. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I'm going to turn all that away. Thank you, and he Jesus. said, hey, I will gather you from all the nations, the north, the south, the east, the west. He said, I'm going to gather you. And he said, I'm going to bring you unto me. Yes. My God. And again, the place which I caused you to be carried away, I'm going to bring you back from those places. And what he's saying is the things that I've allowed to happen in your life, because nothing happens without God's providence. That's right. So nothing happens. That's a lot right. of people, a lot of things we call them, that's the devil, that's the devil, that's this, that's yeah. that. God said, no, that's me. That's me. That's me. Mm -hmm. That's me. Mm -hmm. I, I've allowed some things. And, you know, the kids was asking me the other day, so you mean to tell me, Pastor, that God would allow COVID-19? Mm. It wouldn't have been here, y'all, if God didn't allow it. Mm. Because if, if God don't allow it, he, I told you on Sunday, the devil loves when we give him credit for stuff. Right. He has no power. Mm -hmm. Only if God allows it. And if God allows us to have anything, that means God can heal it. That's <laughs> it. That's if, he, if he allowed it to come, that means God has a cure for it. 
So God tells us here, our destiny and our future is in Him. Yes. Our destiny and future yes. is in Him. And apart from Him, we have nothing. We have nothing. Wow. <laughs> Glory but to one God. of the good things in all of that, you know, through the ups, the downs, the ins, and the outs, yeah. the Lord promises that His presence will be with us. Yes. See, we have to remember oh, also yeah. that when, even when we're in the wilderness, even when we have these detours yeah. or these unexpected situations that come up, the stress, the struggles, the strains, the issues, the trials, the tribulations, yeah. whatever those things that are polar opposite the direction that we want to go, mm -hmm. we have to realize that God is still with us as we go on the journey. Yes, so is. even when we're journeying through the wilderness, mm. God is with us. Even when I'm sick, God is with me. Mm -hmm. Even when my, I'm having financial struggles, God is with yeah, me. Yeah. Because he is the only one. I, I say this and I got this from Apostle Murray um, in Texas. He said, I, I was watching him preach one, one, one year, and I remember him saying, and I took that in my spirit, and I said, amen. But I, I, he said, I would rather for the devil to be on me all the days of my life than for God to be on me one day. Because God can get the devil off of us. But who's going to get a mighty and sovereign God off of you yeah. if God gets on you? Because we, we don't want to experience the wrath of God. But oh, God. Then the God does have a wrath for yeah. his God. But even when we're going through these wilderness experiences, even when we're on our journey, it's to strengthen us. Yeah. It's to encourage us. It's, it's to lead us, what? To God. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when we are doing life, you know, we have to be careful that we're not glory hog. As we're on our journey, because we're, we're, we're supposed to enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. Am I right? The journey is uh, in, in all of our desires and according to what society says, the journey is supposed to be sweet. But how many of you know that's just, that's just not life? You know, we have so many things that are vying for position in our lives. And if we don't give God preeminence, mm -hmm. then who are we going to give preeminence to? Are we going to sow to the lust of the flesh, the pride of life? Or, you know, or to uh, lust of the eyes, uh, lust of the flesh, or to the prides of life? So we have to be careful, you know, that we... Keep our eyes and keep our focus. The Bible says that we have to continue to look to the hills from which coming our help. Why? Because all of our help comes from the Lord. Yeah. So even when we are going through, even through the process, because it is a process, and a lot of us don't want to go through the process. We talked about in John chapter what? John, John chapter five, John fifteen. Excuse me. John 15, about the pruning process that God puts us through. Yeah. We love the fact that he's the husband. We love the fact that he talks about he wants us to bear much fruit. But we don't want to go through the pruning process. Well, with our rose bushes, there are thorns on them. <laughs> as beautiful as they are, they yeah. bloom, they blossom. There are a variety of colors and shapes. And, you know, all of this. Yeah. However, there are thorns on them. And if we're not careful, when we pick this beautiful, beautiful flower, we could prick our finger. Mm -hmm. And it could draw blood. And so we have to be very careful. But nevertheless, knowing that there yet is a balm in Gilead. There is, we put, we, when we get a boo boo, we put meals for it or whatever, want it to what? To heal it, am I right? Yeah. Well, what we've got to do is to bring healing and to bring uh, satisfaction into our lives and to bring about the things that we desire to, in order to reach our destiny, to reach our goal, to finish the course, to finish the race. We've got to apply the living word of God. Yeah. And so a lot of times when we're going through, the enemy be, sometimes it appears that the enemy is on us, but as Pastor said, sometimes that's God. Trying to drive us closer to Him, praise Amen. God. And so we have to realize that even when God is present with us, and I said this last week, it does not abort the training process. So we're all going through a training process. So when good things happen to us, that's a part of the training process. When bad things happen, that's a part of the, of the training process. When there's indifferences, yeah. it's still yet a part of the training process. But I want you to know today 
that God will go with you whithersoever you go with. That is what the word of God says. That we're so on your way to your destiny. Remember that God is going to be with you. Regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it feels like, regardless of what it sounds like, because if we got people, things are buying and speaking into our ears. We've got to trust what thus said the Lord. Right. We say here at, in Christian House of Praise, and we've been taught, you have to home a legale. You've got to speak the word of God. Say the same thing God says. Whatever your situation is, go find the word. Put a word on it. That's mm -hmm. what we say. But a lot of times we get absorbed in the pain mm -hmm. and to get frustrated and all of these other right. things that repels us and, and keeps us from moving forward and applying the word of God. So we have to make sure that we realize this is just meant to prepare and to develop our character. Yes. Amen. God, and, and, and you know, one of the things uh, we like to understand and know, am I going... What is my destiny? Uh huh. And you know, before I, I was going to say, yes. if we know if we're going towards our destiny, mm -hmm. at, what is my destiny? Mm -hmm. That many people say, I'm living life, but Pastor, I don't know what my purpose is. Mm -hmm. When we talk about destiny in Christ, the way you know that you're in your purpose, when you know that you're heading towards your destiny, uh, she mentioned John the 15th chapter. One of the things is, you have a decision to make. And then you have a, you can choose God's way. Yes. As free will agents, I can go my way. But if I go my way, am I going where God has planned for me to go? Mm -hmm. Well, the easy answer is no. Because my way is not his way. That's right. So I, already, I should already know. We read the scripture to you where he said, I know the thoughts that I have toward you. In other words, he's saying, I already know what I planned for you and the destiny that I have for you. So when the question comes... How do I know if I'm going toward my destiny? How do I know if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do in the destiny that God has planned for me? You know how you answer that? Are you living your life according to God's plan for your life? Uh -huh. If you are, then you're going toward the destiny that Christ has for you. How, where do you get this from, Pastor? Look here, destiny, just the word destiny, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. It's our faith. You can look it up in Webster's Dictionary. Our future. Our fortune, that's our destiny. Proverbs 24, 20 and 24 says this, and I wanted to read it out of the King James. 20 and 24 says, A man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man understand his own ways? That's what King James says. It says, A man's goings, Proverbs 20 and 24, A man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man understand his own ways? Check what I just told you. His own ways. Is it God's way or your way? Now, let's, now I want to read it to you in the Living Bible. The Living Bible says, Since the Lord is directing our steps, why try to understand everything that's happening along the way? Mm. See, because when I'm driving and you don't know the way, but you're in the passenger seat, you're not, you can't direct. Oh, good God. Yeah, good. Come on, you man. can't direct. Many people do from the passenger yeah, seat. So I'm trying to do it from the back seat. <laughs> well, well, good to God. But we got to allow the navigator. <laughs> hear, hear me now. We got to allow the navigator to navigate. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And when it comes to our lives and our destiny, God is the navigator. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says here, when you read Proverbs 20 and 24 in the Living Bible, it says, since the Lord is directing your steps. Why try to understand everything that's happening uh, along the way? Oh my God. You're trying to figure out every, why did this happen to me, Lord? Why did that happen to me, Lord? He said, if I'm directing your steps, if you're riding with me and I'm driving, good God Almighty, just stay in the car. Stay. All you got to do is stay strapped in, he said. You, Keep your seatbelt on. He said, I'm directing this thing. Now, what lets us know in Scripture that that is true? Romans 8 and 28. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I'm talking about your destiny tonight. Your destiny in Christ. Because along the way, Lady Willie was just telling us about because sometimes things don't always work. No, sir. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things don't always go the way that we plan mm -hmm. for them to go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we're trying to do things in life, they just don't work out. Mm -hmm. But when you go to Romans 8 and 28, it says when we fully understand that God is the navigator, not us, 
God is the navigator. Come when on, we fully man. understand that, we know that even when we have bad breaks in our life, uh -huh. even when we go through stress, struggle, and strain in our life, we know that Romans 8 and 28 says this. All things work together. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Not some things, but all, all things. things. Work together. Yes, sir. Yeah. Wait a minute, Pastor. You mean to tell me when I didn't get that job, that, that was uh, that was working for my good? All uh, things yes, work sir. together. Yeah. You mean to tell me when I got sick, mm. that was working for my good? Yeah. The Bible says when God is directing your, ordering your steps, don't try to understand everything along the way. Because he is the one ordering your steps, and he'll work out a sickness for your good. Yes. Glory to God. I missed my exit. Got off at the wrong place. I, I went through the wrong town. God said, I just protected you from an accident. See? 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 All things work together for, for the, the good, good of them that love God. Yes. And to them who are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Those of you that just entered in, we have Bibles for you in the back because I don't want to say something and y'all say, Pastor said, no, I'm saying what the Lord said. Lady Whitley just told us we got a homo legeo. What does homo legeo mean? It, legeo is the language, the logos. We got to say, speak what God says. We got to say what the word says. Don't say what somebody else said. Say what God says. So we know that Romans 8 and 28 tells us that all things work for the good. Mm -hmm. Even the bad things. Mm -hmm. Why? Because mm -hmm. I got to trust God in the bad times just like I got to trust him in the good times. Right? Mm -hmm. And you know what some people do? They put more faith in God when everything's good than they do when everything's bad. Mm -hmm. They act like God didn't abandon them. Mm -hmm. God didn't left that because I'm going through a drought. I'm going through a bad period. He said, no, I'm still with you. Mm -hmm. I promise that I'd never leave you. Even in this struggle, I'm right here with you. He said, but I can't see you, God. I can't hear you, God. He said, you didn't hear me when things was good either. Yeah. 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 He said, you didn't hear me when things was good. See, we try, to, we, regu we try to regulate him. I can't hear you. I can't see you. But when things are going good in our life, you know what? We don't hear him and see him then because we're not trying to hear him then. Mm -hmm. Everything going good in my life now. Mm -hmm. But when things start going bad, we look to him. Am I on my destiny track? Am I going the way I should go? God, I can't hear you. I can't see you. He said, I promise never to leave you or never to forsake you. Yes. I'm still with you, even in the hard times. And I want to point out something tonight, y'all. We say in the hard times, or in the struggles, and in the strength. God said, I'm with you even when you're not with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, this is this how bad God is. He said, I'm with you even when you're not yes, with me. Yes, he is. When you've withdrawn yourself from me, he said, I'll never withdraw myself from you. Mm. See, even when we separate from God. Now, what are you talking about, Pastor? Because we're destined to succeed. We just gave you the scripture and where he tells you that I know the thoughts I have for you. I know the plans I have for you. We're destined to succeed. He didn't, God did not create you to fail. I'm going to show you tonight in Scripture that there is no failure in God. I'm going to show it to you tonight. There's no failure in God. Well, I didn't fail a whole lot of times in my life, but were you in God? Mm. See, because even a mistake in God is still success. Good God, y'all don't hear me tonight. Look here, John the 15th chapter, verse 5. I want to show you tonight. There is no failure in God. He said, I am the vine. Lady Willie already referred to this. And he said, then, you said, well, who am I? He said, you are the branches. Y'all see that in your Bible? Yes. He, said, mm -hmm. he said, see, because we need to identify with who we are. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm the vine. Let's go and get this straight right now, who I am. Remember I told you earlier, he's the navigator. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. He's the one that knows the way. He, matter of fact, he told us in one verse of scripture, he says, I am the way. Yes. <laughs> yes. You're trying to find out which way to go. He said, find, follow me. I am the way. But here he tells us, I am the vine. And then some of us want to know, am I on my destiny track? Am I going the way I should be going? He said, well, check out. Do you know who you are? And some of us are trying to be something that we're not. And God says, you are the branches. He said, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same does what? You bring forth much, much fruit. Yes. Let you know you're on your destiny track. You're going the right way. Why? Because I'm in him and he's in me. So therefore, I bring forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. he, and then he lets you know. Because you have withdraw yourself from him. He says, without me, what can Say it, somebody. You, you see it? Mind you, you can do, do nothing. nothing. So there's many people in life that think they're succeeding in life, but they're doing it apart from God. And if uh, we often say, success without God is failure. failure. Mm -hmm. 
success without God is failure. You see it many times on TV. We see people, we think because they got a lot of money, we see them on TV, they're famous, and they ain't got all this success, and they don't never say nothing about God, they ain't in God. That success is failure. That's failure. That's not success. That's success according to the world's way. But success with God is that you stay abiding in Him. He said, when you stay with me, you will be successful. The scripture teaches us that humans are created, and I started off with this. We can make decisions on our own. We don't have to check for nobody. God said, I made you a free will agent. You ain't got to check for nobody. But he was hoping along the way, somewhere, we would realize that all these decisions we're making, all these moves we're making, we're failing, and we might need some help. Uh-huh. And just like those ten lepers, he's wondering, when are you going to stop making these mistakes? When are you going to stop failing and turn around and start asking me? Yes. Start inquiring of me. Because I know more than you know. I see further than you see. He says, so check with me when you make decisions. He said, now I made you free will. You can do what you want to do. Because I'm not going to tie your hands. And God is a gentleman. He's not going to force you. He's not going to force you. But God said, why call me Lord, Lord, if you're not going to do what I tell you? Come on, Pastor. <laughs> and many of us, when we get in a bind, when we get in a tight spot, all of a sudden, Lord, Lord. Now he's Lord, Lord. But when everything's going good in your life, he said, I don't never hear from you. Mm-hmm. Who want to be friends with somebody they only call you when, when uh, they need something? Need something. Mm-hmm. Who wants a friend like that? When you look at the phone, you know we got that phone now. We can say, oh, that so-and-so calling you. Mm-hmm. They need something. That's how we do God. We do God like that. We call him. He, he got call ID too. <laughs> he know who you are. <laughs> he know who you are. He said, oh, Lord, they're going to pass the window again. Now he needs something. He called it again. Glory to God. But we're destined to succeed. That's right. We're destined to have success. Come on, God wants us to have That's success. success. He wants you to be successful. God That's said, right. I want you to be successful. I created you to win. That's why. Right. And the only reason why we lose in life is because we withdraw ourselves from him. He said, now, if you want to get back on the winning team, at any time, he said, I don't even close the door when you leave. Mm-hmm. Oh, glory to God. Well, when my kids got old enough and they started branching off and leaving, I didn't just close it. I locked it. <laughs> <laughs> glory to God. But God said, I leave the door open. Even when you leave, and you know, sometimes people leave God and they're mad. Mm. They leave God and they're upset. Why did God have to, why did I have to go through that? Why was I raised like that? Why did I have to go through this? I went through abuse. I went through struggle. I went through strength. And they'll leave God because they're hurt. Mm-hmm. And God said, I, I'd never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And when you left, I left the door open. That's because right. your destiny is in me. Right. See, our destiny is like our, uh, like our identity. A lot of people are trying to find their identity. Our identity mm-hmm. is in divinity. In divinity. Mm-hmm. Our identity is in divinity. So is our destiny. Come on, Pastor. Our identity is in divinity, meaning it is in Christ. Yes. If you don't identify, your DNA came from him. He's the father. Mm-hmm. That's your DNA. You, we think it's our natural mama, our natural dad. No, your DNA came from the father, from the father. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's who our identity is in. So also, our destiny is in him. Yes, sir. Our destiny yes, sir. is in him. Yes, sir. Our future and our hope is in him. Amen. Lord, Amen. Praise God. It's nice to say we are destined to win. I'm yes. glad he went there. You know, a lot of times, you know, we are, we're down, you know, and in the dumps because of life experiences. But God lets us know that there is a time for breakthrough. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's a time to break out. You know, there's a scripture where he says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up the everlasting doors. The and he said, and let the king of glory come in. He said, well, who is the who king of glory? Who is the king of glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty, mighty in battle. Yeah. He is the King of Glory. Praise God. Am I right? Yeah. And remember in Jeremiah chapter 29, we read the scriptures. In Jeremiah, in that scripture, he sent the letter to the people um, that Nebuchadnezzar had carried away into captivity mm-hmm. from Jerusalem to Babylon. If you go back in your mind, where we read the scriptures. And the letter, what he instructed them to do, he said, I want you to move ahead with your life. Mm-hmm. And he said, and I want you to pray for the heathen nation that has enslaved you. Mm-hmm. Then that sound like the scripture where the Lord says, pray the for your enemies. Who yeah. yeah. despitefully mm-hmm. use yeah. you. Yeah. Those yeah. that mistreat yeah. you. That mishandle you. Yeah. So what 
what he tells them, he says, I want you to what? He said, build houses. If you go back to Jeremiah 29, 4 through 7, 11 through 14. He told them to be successful. Amen. He told them to succeed. Yes. That's what he was telling That's what he's telling them. He said, build houses. He said, and don't only build them, y'all. I want you to live in them. <laughs> See, he's giving them explicit instructions. Mm -hmm. And how many of you know that our success and our destiny is in the instructions? And how we follow mm. these instructions determines where we're going to be destined for. Mm. So we have to, are we going to be destined to succeed or are we going to be destined to fail? So one of the Who things. instructions are we taking? Our or God. God. Ah. Mm. Ours or God. Ours or God. And we have to be careful because when we start to follow our mind, that's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Yeah. That is also in Christ Jesus. Well, what mind is in Christ Jesus? The mind of God. They say, yeah. no man knows the mind Ooh. of God. But the son. But yes. the son. Say yes. Christ Jesus. But we can't have the mind of Christ. Yes. So yes. we have to put on the mind yes. of Christ. When we are in, God gives us so many instructions in the word. But he tells them, he said, build your houses, live in them. He said, plant gardens mm. and eat the fruit that comes mm. from them. Mm. He said, get married, have children. Tell them get how to be wise. successful. Tell them you how to, how do to be this. successful. Say, yeah. get wise for your sons, not, not wise for your um, 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 uh, husbands for your uh, you know, he said get wives yeah, for your son. Don't, don't you know what I'm saying? Don't, I ain't gonna, yeah, yes, I will go there. Yeah. 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 Oh yes, I will. Yeah. <laughs> don't get wives for yeah. your wives. Don't get wives for your sons. Don't get no wives for your daughters. Yeah. Is yeah. what I get yeah. right yeah. today. Yeah. Well, we know. And no husbands for your sons. He yeah. said, get wives for your sons mm -hmm. and give your daughters in marriage to men. That means husbands. Yeah. I know somebody going to get mad. It's all right. Well, they're not successful. Because you won't be exactly. <laughs> to God. So that they can have sons and daughters. Yeah. If you got wives for your daughters, you cannot have sons and daughters. I know they create another way, alternative way. Oh, my, my, but God, that's not God's way. So right. And we've got to follow God's way. He said, and increase while in Babylon and not die out. The key word mm -hmm. which you just hit on was increase. Success yes. is increase. Yes. And what God wants you to do, and I, I, somebody told me this years ago, you know successful people in life, what they found mm -hmm. is what works, and they do it repetitiously. Yeah. Just find out what, you really want to be successful That's in life? Right. This, this is just simple success now. I teach this. Find out what, what, is, what works. And do it over and over again. That's, That's what successful people do. Mm -hmm. But this is how you find success in Christ. Find out what God is blessing. Mm -hmm. And do that. Yes. Continue. Yes. You want to be successful in God? Find out what God is blessing. And continually do that. That's how you find success. He said, she read the scripture right there. He said, increase. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. When you're, when you're trying to be successful, you want to increase. He told them to build houses. He was telling them how to do it. He, he said, gardens. What was he telling them to do? Industry. Yes. See, ministry without industry ends up with nothing. Mm -hmm. That's the reason That's the reason why the church is stagnated. Because we got we got the word, but we don't have ministry within industry. Mm -hmm. That's how you build. He told them to be how to be successful. Then if you would go to the book of Joshua, the first chapter, the eighth verse, the Bible tells us in the beginning, this is what God wants for us, to be successful. Joshua 1 and 8 says it like this. This book of the law. Hello, what book are you talking about? This one right here. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt do what? Meditate. Therein, day and night. Remember, I just told you, find out what God is blessing and do that repetitiously. He said, meditate therein, day and night, that thou may observe and do. Look at what it says. Hold up, somebody. Don't read the Bible too fast. It's like eating a good steak. If you eat that steak, see, a steak is not a hamburger. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, you eat a steak different than you eat a hamburger. Come on, somebody. And when you're reading the Word of God, don't read it too fast because mm -hmm. you might miss something. Look what it says here. That you may observe. Hello. I got to see it. See Come it. on, somebody. I got to observe it. And now that I've observed it, he said, and what? Do it. Yes, sir. Do it. See, the, I always say that the uh, anointing is in the instruction. Instruction. The blessing. Is in your, in your obedience. obedience. The anointing, hear me now, is in the instructions. See, the anointing, some people say, oh, he's anointed, she's anointed. 
No, not if they're not doing what God said. See, the anointing is in the instructions. The blessing, how we get blessed, is in our obedience. It says, observe and do according to all that is written therein. You know how we get the instructions to put something together sometimes? And we get halfway through them instructions, and all of a sudden, I don't know if we think we got a revelation or something. I know how to do it now. But they sent some instructions with you. you. You put the rest of it together based off of your knowledge, not off of what they gave you them instructions. Yeah. And you got four, five screws left over, <laughs> piece over here left over. Yeah. Yeah. It says you got to do all that is written therein. Yeah. And then, here it is, y'all. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Here it is. Here yeah. it is, y'all. This is how you increase. And thou shalt have. Am I in your Bible? Yes. What does it say? Good success. Good success. Mm -hmm. This is how you get. This is how you succeed in life. This is how you know that you're following your destiny. That's right. Yes. He said, "Are you observing my word? Are you doing everything that's written therein?" He said, "Because if you're observing it and you're doing everything that's written therein, mm -hmm. guess what? You're going to have." Good success. Good success. And I want to show you something tonight before we leave out of here tonight. That God is a man of his, his word. He, word. Not lie. he, he said, I ain't lie. telling you nothing. I ain't telling you nothing that I will not myself bring the pain. Mm -hmm. I thank God that I trust God more than me. Yeah, I know. Now, lady, like, when he said something earlier about having the mind of Christ, y'all, I'm going to tell you right now. When you get in Christ, like the uh, John says in the... Uh, 15th chapter of John, he's in you and you're in him, you have to deny your own thinking sometimes. Mm. Uh -huh. The Bible says it like this, cast yeah, down yeah. every vain imagination. Every and we have some vain thoughts and, and imaginations. We have them, y'all. We all have them. I don't care. Nobody's exempt from having them. But the Bible teaches us how when those thoughts enter our mind, you gotta, you gotta rise above that thought and cast it down. Mm -hmm. You ever thought something and say, my God, I, I shouldn't be thinking like that. You got sense enough know not to smack your ball. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, but you thought, you probably thought it though. Mm -hmm. Did he just say what? She said what? <laughs> and I know you got more than, uh, than enough sense. You better not raise your hand to mama. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Or daddy. Mm -hmm. I told you, my, my stepdad said <laughs> he had that gun in the house, not outside. Why? Because we have, we have to cast down those negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. They come into all of our minds. And what those thoughts do, they come to hinder us from following our destiny. Mm -hmm. Those thoughts come to hinder us. Our own thoughts. Don't go and say, oh, the devil made me think that. No, that was you. You thought that. Take the, take the yes, you thought that thought. That was the devil. The devil get happy. He's like, oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. But I, I don't have any power, but thank you anyway. No, doubting, doubting your destiny. Mm -hmm. Doubting your destiny. Doubt is a spirit, y'all. Yes, it is. It is a spirit. See, a lot of people doubt themselves. I can't be successful. I can't do this. I can't do that. If I open my own business, I, I don't have an education. If I, if I do this right here, it won't work. They start to doubt themselves. And mm -hmm. you know what God says? You're doubting your destiny. Yes. And I told you no in my destiny. word that your destiny no is in me. Yes. And in Christ, there is no future. I mean, there is no failure in your future. So when you start to doubt yourself, you know what you're really doing? You're doubting God. Yep. You're doubting God. Mm -hmm. Pastor, where are you getting it? I got to show it to you in Scripture. I, I can't just tell you something. See, doubt is a spirit. You know, if it's, if it's a spirit and it's doubt, it's negative, you know it didn't come from God. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know it didn't come from God. It comes to contradict and confuse us, y'all. It comes to contradict and confuse you against what? The word of God. Word of, God. of what he's told you about yourself. Mm -hmm. God said you shall succeed. I just read to you uh, Joshua 1 and 8 where he tells you how to have good success if you would do what my word says. So when you're doing what God's word says and you're going along the path and then something don't work out and something don't happen. What happens is the spirit of doubt comes in and tell you, no, that business idea going to fail. You're not going to be able to succeed over there. You better not buy that property. Whatever it is that was promoting you, pushing you to your destiny, doubt comes in to confuse and to contradict. you got to get doubt out. you got to get doubt out. When Jesus went in to heal Jairus' uh, daughter, mm -hmm. there were some people in the room, they was already mourning the little girl. They was getting ready to have a funeral for mm -hmm. her. And Jesus walks in with the mother and the father. 
who didn't have the spirit of doubt. But the people in the room said, Jesus said, she just sleeping. He turned to the mother and father and told them that their daughter was just sleeping. That's it. God That's it. <laughs> the people in the room who were mourning her started laughing. They said, she ain't, she ain't sleeping. She dead. What is he talking about? And Jesus, sensing that doubt was in the room. He said, y'all got to go. He said, doubt got to go. He put them out of the room, kept the mama and the father, the ones who had faith. Come on, somebody. The ones who had faith. He kept them in the room. And then he spoke a good God of mine. Then he spoke. See, whenever you, whenever you say what God says, you're saying life. You're speaking life. Whenever you say what God says, even when you say it to yourself, yes. you're speaking life to yourself. Mm -hmm. Jesus walked over to the bed where the little girl was dead, and he started to speak to her, and she came back to life. What did he just do? He changed her destiny. Come on, here. Yeah. He changed Come on. her destiny. Come on. It's some things in our life that we think might be dead, y'all. Ain't no way I can resurrect that again. Ain't no, I'm, I done got too old now. We blame everything on me. I done got too old. I can't do that no more. I can't do that. God says speak life to it. That's it. Mm -hmm. God said, speak life to it. That garden ain't dead. God said, uh, God said every, all you got to do is put some more seeds down. Put, right. put some he said, put a little fertilizer around. He said, that thing can come back to life Fertilize right it now. with the word. God, oh, yes. that, 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 that's what you got to put on it. it with the word. God does not want you to be confused yes. about your destiny. Yes, sir. He wants you, he wants you to know the way of your destiny. He don't want you wondering, should I go left, should I go right, I'm confused, I don't know. That's what the world wants you to be in. God wants you to know that you're on track. That's right. He wants you. You ever been doing something and been like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing? You ever caught yourself doing something and felt like, I'm in my, I'm in my zone, I'm in my, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It may be, it may be your vocation, it may be your occupation, it may be just some, a hobby that you like doing, but you find such enjoyment in it. Sometimes people on jobs, some people have jobs where if I know I had one at one time, even if they didn't pay me, I didn't tell them that. I didn't tell them that. But even if they had not paid me, I knew I was in the zone. I knew I was doing exactly what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. This is how God wants our minds to function as Christians when we are in Him and headed toward our destiny. He wants you to know the way, not be confused about the way. And say, how, how, how will I know the way, Pastor? How do I find out the way? He says in his word, I am the way. Yeah. Oh, he said, when you're looking for signs, you're looking for wonders, you're looking for which way should I go, he said, look for me. All you got to do is look up. Stop looking for all them other. Don't look for no people to point you. He said, look up. And I'll show you which way to go. I am the way. Instead, he wants us to know the way. And not only does he want us to know the way, y'all, he wants us to know the truth. Yes. yes. See, if there's any lies in your life, if there's any untruths in your life, if there's any secrets in your life, if you, I said it on Sunday, if you're sweeping some stuff under the rug mm. in your life, you're not going the way. way. You're not going the way that he wants you to go. You're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. And this is how God wants us to be. God wants us to know the way, but also he wants us to be fully persuaded that we're going the right way. That's right. We, we confess it every Sunday when yes. we say the confession of faith. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the confession of faith, I don't know if y'all know, we're in Romans, the fourth chapter, the 21st verse. Romans, the fourth chapter, the 21st verse, when we get to the end of our confession of faith, we say it because God don't want you doubting the way. He wants you to know the way. And we say, and be fully persuaded. God, God, God said, I want you fully persuaded. Not partially persuaded. I want you fully persuaded that he that has promised, he's talking about himself now. He said that he that has promised is able also. Woo! He didn't just make the promise. God said, I just don't tell you I can do it, but I'm able also to bring it to pass, yes, to will. perform whatever my word says. Mm -hmm. God said he'll perform his very word. You know this verse of scripture that talks about God is listening throughout the world. He's moving to and fro, uh -huh. trying to find. He wants to He wants to hear his word so he can perform it. But we, be talk, we say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. we, saying, we saying how we feel, I'm sick. Instead of saying, by your stripes, Lord, I'm healed. When he hear that, oh my God, you might not be feeling good in your body, but you just spoke his word. And he said, I got to perform my word. Instead of you saying, I'm sick, but you spoke his word and said, by your stripes, Lord, I'm healed. He heard that. And he said, I got to perform my word. Because then you just read right, being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he said, I promise to heal you, I also will perform. But if I don't hear my word, 
You ain't speaking my word. You speaking in doubt. Mm. You speaking in doubt. He said, I don't, I don't work. I don't work in no situation. And my people think that they just think it. Oh, come mm. on, come on, baby. They just think. Come it. on. Woo. The Bible, yes, God says that He hears the words of our mouth, and mm -hmm. He also hears our heart. Mm -hmm. But He wants to be. He wants us to know that we know that He knows. Yeah. And so He does. He wants us to speak. Yeah. You know, um, as we were reading in the scripture, your words have power. Oh yes. Your words have power. Oh yes. Negative and positive power. In Jeremiah, when we were reading in Jeremiah, I believe it was Jeremiah 29, mm -hmm. verses 12 through 14, he said, when you call on me and when you come and pray to me, he said, I will listen to you. Mm -hmm. He said, and when you come looking for me, you're going to find me. Mm -hmm. This is just piggybacking off of what Pastor's saying. Mm -hmm. He said, when you search for me with all your heart, mm -hmm. he says, yes, when you get serious, mm -hmm. see, because everybody ain't serious, mm -hmm. but when you get, he said, when you search for me, uh, with all of your heart. That means you're serious. Mm -hmm. When you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else in the world, he said, I'll be sure to not disappoint you. Mm -hmm. Don't you know people come to church sometimes and they're searching for God with their head. And not their heart. And not their heart. Mm -hmm. And they leave disappointed sometimes because they didn't receive what their head thought they were supposed to. But God wants to, he doesn't want you to be disappointed. That's right. He, he wants your heart, though. Oh, yes, he does. He wants your heart. Oh, yes, he does. He goes on to say in the scriptures, he said, and you will find me, says the Lord, and I will turn things around for you. Mm. Somebody is, mm. needs to hear this. Yes. See, we, we want God to turn some things around. Mm -hmm. We want God to make the way of escape. We want God to make the crooked way straight, but we will not search for him with all of our hearts. Mm. That's why we can ask everybody here to get a Bible. Mm -hmm. Because hearing somebody else say it is fine. But when I read it myself, don't you know it's different when I read it? They pulled a contract out one time. I didn't want to read the whole contract. Me and my wife was doing a business deal. Oh, I said, oh, no, we're not leaving out of here till I read the whole thing. <laughs> we was all in the corner, laid out. But she read that contract. And then she told him, hey, right man, y'all, that's, that's not right. <laughs> and you got to change it? Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. But, but God, you got to read it for yourself. That's right. And for God to turn things around because he says, he goes on to tell him, he says, I will bring you back from all the countries. Mm -hmm. From all of the issues, from mm -hmm. all of the circumstances, right. from all of the battles that you've been fighting, from mm -hmm. all of the trials, mm -hmm. from all of the tribulations yeah. which I drove you. Mm -hmm. Some things that we're going through is because God drove you into that wilderness experience. Mm -hmm. He drove mm -hmm. you to that situation. Yes, Why? Right. Because he wants to get Ooh. your full and undivided Attention. He did it. He just did it last year to all of us. Yes, he did. Yeah. To the world. Not just to not just to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Not just to your house. He did it to the world. That's right. To get our attention. Somebody said, no, it was COVID-19. That was that was the president. That was good. No, that was God. That's right. And then he goes on to say, and I will bring you home. And he says you can count on. So you can count on God. That's confidence. You can depend on God. Ooh, that's confidence. But right we've there. got to follow the script. Mm -hmm. God has given us a prescription for our life. Oh and I want oh, you to know it. on tonight that failure is not in God's plan for any of his children. No, it's not. It's not. No, it's it's not. not in his plan no, for any not. of his children. No, it's but not. when we get out of the wheel, instead of in the wheel, in the middle of the wheel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we start going through unnecessary roughness and unnecessary, unnecessary changes. Mm -hmm. His desire is that we thrive in every endeavor My in God. our lives. Mm -hmm. God wants you and me to succeed. Am I right? Yes. He said, yes. and, and Pastor read it in Joshua, he wants us to have good, good success. He wants you to have it. And God wants us to live in, the, in peace. Mm. He wants us to have divine help. Yes. Where am I getting this from? Let's go to Isaiah 65 and 24, yeah, and then we'll it. read some more scriptures. But in Isaiah 65 and 24, God says this. He said, I will answer them before they call me. Yes. While they are still talking about their needs. Uh, 65 and what? 
Isaiah 65 and 24. I'm there. God said, oh. I will answer them before they even call to me. My God, why the yes? While speak. they are still talking about their needs. He said, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Mm. I want to give you some confidence and My encourage God. you oh. as you're going along your My way and your God. destiny in hey. life. So I need to write that down so you can know what God is saying. So you can go you. back to that scripture and remind yourself. That's right. Because sometimes the way we get encouragement is I got to go back and read it again so I can remind myself what God said about me. So God is saying what he's saying that even the very first words that you utter mm. in prayer or when you're talking to him, he's already prepared a solution. Yeah. Yeah. He already dispatched the name. Right. He said, I've already given you a way out. Mm. My God. Wow. And then while we're calling on him, he's already involving and as I said, dispatching those angels mm. to go forth and to change our situation. 3 John 1 and 2 tells us this. It says, God wants you and I to have what? Good fortune in everything that you and I do. He even wants us to have good health. The, the scripture actually says this. I'll read it in because a lot of us, a lot of us, amen. 3 John what? 3 John chapter, uh, 3 John 1 and 2. Because I have a different translation, but I want Pastor to read it in the King James. 3 John 1 and 2. The elder unto the beloved guide us. Whom I love and true. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, there it is again, and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. And I read the why I have Pastor read one and two, because I want you to put your name there. Mm -hmm. Angela, LT, mm -hmm. whomever you are, unto the well beloved. Gaia, as he's talking about, mm -hmm. but you can put James, whoever. Put your name in there. Mm -hmm. And then he says, whom I love in truth. In and truth. then he goes on love and he tells you that there are miracles out there that belong to you. Mm -hmm. There's healing that belongs to you. There's blessings out there that belong to you. And I, there's financial breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. We need to know what God is saying and desires for yeah. us. They are waiting for us. Blessings that belong to you and I. Mm -hmm. Psalms 115, 13 through 14, King James Version. He, God, the Bible says, will bless them that fear him. In other words, that respect him, that reverence him. Mm, come on. Both small and great. It doesn't matter if you're a king or a prince or if you're a lay person or a commoner. Mm -hmm. This is what he's saying. The Lord shall increase you more and more. That's Psalms 115. That's Psalm 115, 13 through 14. So God will bless those of us who reverence him and that submit to him with our whole heart. Those that will get under the mission of God. To submit, submit to, to get him. under the mission yeah. to of him. God. Well, what's the mission of God? Everything that's written in this word. You can find out everything that God wants you to do. And then you'll be able to have good success. Why? Because Pastor said earlier... Out the anointing is in what? The anointing is in his instructions. But the blessing is in what? Our obedience. Our obedience. Yeah. You know, before we close, I wanna I wanna piggyback off of everything you just said speaks to the confidence that God wants Christians to have. Yes, sir. God wants Christians to have this confidence, this assurance. Matter of fact, this is what God does, y'all. You know when you buy a product and they tell you we guarantee it uh -huh. or your money back. Uh -huh. <laughs> We guarantee it or your money back. I don't know how many of y'all have got the money back, but, but they guarantee it. Yes, he does. God guarantees yes. his word. And this is the confidence that God wants the Christians to have. As Christians, we should be confident, not just in God, but God wants you to have confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is the confidence, especially when you know that you are living, she just broke it down to you, mm -hmm. according to his word mm -hmm. and his will. This is the confidence. First John 5 and 14. I want you to leave tonight knowing that your confidence is built up in yourself. I got confidence in myself. Why? Because God said I'm this. Because God says I'm that. Because God called me this. This is the kind. Of, 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says this. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Yes. That if we ask anything See? according to his will, mm -hmm. he would. He hears he hear us. us. I want to stop there before I read 15. Here at the Christian House of Praise, we teach this. The first level of my spiritual maturity is my ability to hear from God. And then what? 
And once I hear from him, I now I got to step out by faith uh -huh. and do what he told me to do. No. That's the first level of my spiritual maturity. I got to have the ability to hear from him. Okay. This is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Mm -hmm. And then verse 15 says, and if we know that he hears us, here it is, y'all. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. Mm -hmm. I know that my destiny is in him. I know that my destiny is bright. I know that my future is awesome. I know that I shall succeed and I shall not fail. I know that he wants me to be the head and not the tail. Yes. This is the confidence that God wants us to have in him. And then he don't stop there. He said, and I guarantee it. Thank you, Lord. He said, then he guarantees it. Thank you, Lord. How does he guarantee it? Before we close, I got to give this to y'all tonight. Isaiah 55 and 11. God guarantees his word, y'all. Put this down. Read it for yourself tonight. <clears throat> God has guaranteed his word. He said, I'm going to fulfill my word. Believe me. Isaiah 55 and 11 said, For as the rain comes down. Don't rain come down? Some mm -hmm. came down today while we were yeah. not there. Handing out boxes of food. Go, glory mm -hmm. to God. He said, and the, no, and the snow comes from heaven. Am I in your Bible? Isaiah 55 and 11. And return it not. Rain comes down, but it don't go back. Snow comes down, but it don't go back. He said, but what does it do? It waters the, it waters earth. the earth. It brings forth the bud. Increase. He said, for increase. That it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Mm -hmm. Remember she read the scripture in Jeremiah where he told you to go build a uh, plant crop. So shall my word that go forth. He said, my word is just like the rain that come down. The rain comes down to water the earth. He said, so does my word come down to water you. He says, for out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. void. But what shall it do, God? Accomplish. It shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper wherein I sent it. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Look how God wants you to be confident of his word. He wants you to Whoa. succeed. God is guaranteeing his word. Now I'm going to give you another scripture before I close. You read it in your own time. Numbers 23 and 19. God is guaranteed. He said, God is not a man that he should lie. <laughs> yeah. Glory to God. Is how he, said. he said, I'm not a man that I should lie. Numbers uh, 23 and 19. Neither the son of man that I should repent. He said, I don't have to repent because I'm not going to tell him about it. He, he that said and shall not do it. He said, I'm not the one who says stuff and don't do it. Mm -hmm. He said, or he that spoke something and shall not make it good. Remember I told you on Sunday, my granddaddy said a man's word is his bond. God said, whenever I say something. I will bring it to pass. My word is my bond. And he said, I guarantee it. Also, what he's saying in that verse of scripture, I guarantee your future. That's right. I guarantee your hope. I guarantee your future if you stay in me. If, you stay, if we stay in God, y'all, we we're going to have success. We shall win. It may look gloomy sometimes. We're going to go through some bad days just like everybody else. But Lady Willie told us tonight, I'd rather have, I'd rather have God with me on a bad day than the devil. I'd rather, have, I'd rather have God with me all the days of my life than to have the devil with me any of the days of my life. Because God's going to guarantee his word and guarantee your, your destiny and your success. Amen. We thank God for y'all being with us tonight. Amen. We would be remiss to even close out or think that we should close without giving you an opportunity to, to, to know that your destiny is in Christ. Well, how do I know my destiny in Christ? Are you in Christ? It's one thing to say my destiny, and I'm my own, own track for where I'm supposed to go, but am I in Christ? Yeah. And those of you that's listening to us even now that's on the airways, and those of you that, that are with us now on the different sites and the different social media, are you in Christ? See, because that's how you know your destiny is secure. Yes. First, I got to be in Christ. Thank you. I tell people all the time, and the first step is are you in him? Yes. See, sometimes we try to go to second base and we have not even left home plate yet. First, we got to make sure we're in him. And how do I get in him? I have to accept and receive him. Amen. Once I accept and receive him, guess what? I'm on track with my destiny. Mm -hmm. If you're listening to us tonight and you don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, I want, I want my destiny to be secure, Pastor. I want, I want these yeah. things that y'all talked about tonight uh, to apply to me. But I'm not in Him. Yes. You have to get in Him so these things can apply to you. And it's simple. All you have to do is repeat these words after me. Lord God, I'm a sinner, Father God, and I need you to come into my life. Yes. 
I know that you gave your son Jesus to die for the sins of the world. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. We read the scripture to you tonight that when you search with search him with all your heart, he you said, you shall find me. If you spoke those words with your mouth and you believe them in your heart, Jesus has just come into your life. What you need to do now is unite yourself with other believers. Learn more about his word so that you can grow and be headed towards your destiny. This is our prayer. Those of you that, that's been listening to us, what we like to do, we like to sow a seed. Amen. We read the scripture to you tonight where he says, His word goes forth out of his mouth and it shall prosper. He is the one that gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater, Father uh -huh. God. And we thank God tonight. If you're with us tonight, you're sowing seed today. We've got many ways to give. Some of them on the screen even tonight. I like to give. I, I like it in my hand. We put our seed in our hand and what we want to do, we want to pray, Father God, we thank you now, Father God, for the seed and for the sower, Father God. Yes, Your God. word says that you shall provide seed for the sower, Father yes. God. And we thank you for providing, Father God. Now, we bless this seed, Father God, by the washing of your word, Father God, that it will go forth, Father, some 60, some 80, some 100 fold, Father God, that the increase, Father God, and the destiny that it shall provide, Father God, will be in you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. We thank God for all of you tonight. May the Lord keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you and give you peace. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. amen.